man, all this for one project. When I work smaller parts on this machine, of course, the tool holder is closer to the center line. And there is a bit a problem. If I want to use the tailstock, it's touching the cross slide. And that's why I always set the tailstock in an angle. So now it can pass. And then, of course, here we're gonna have a new problem. This corner is gonna touch the jaws. To be good, I should take this uh, top slide off and make one solid tool post. It's for a long time now I'm playing with that idea, but you know how it goes. Maybe I don't have the right materials, maybe I don't have time to do it. And in the last week's video someone commented hey you should make a solid tool post and take the top slide off and this renewed the idea so thank you very much if I take the tool holder off of course I already prepared a little bit and I take the top slide off Here's a sort of ring with two T-bolts in it and I would like to reuse them. So make a block that resists in this ring here and holds down with these two bolts and then remount the tool holder on top. I'm not interested in a quick change tool holder, I'm never in a hurry, I can put several tools in this thing and for me it works just fine. This piece is a leftover when I repaired my anvil. You see a little bit here the taper and then it left outside for too long. So this could be a very nice piece to make my block. I have a bolt that fits here in this hole. Not too much slop, just a little bit and a fantastic stainless, stainless steel nut. I think it's gonna work. If I wanna face off this part here in the lathe, there's gonna be interrupted cuts for I don't know how long. And this machine is not a really big fan of interrupted cuts. Plus, I have to hand feed, there's no automatic cross feed on this one, so I don't think that's a good idea. I hate hand feeding. It's too big to fit in the band saw, so that's not an option either. Use the shaper, good idea. Now I still have a little problem. I have here more or less the outlines on it and when I come at the finished diameter this little part here will not clean up. So I don't know yet what I'm gonna do with it but I think I will do. A little change of plans over here. My first idea was to use this side, this face, as the bottom face and then this 40mm round here should register in the cross light. And then you have here this uh, little left over that uh, it's not enough material so it will be hidden in the hole and no one will ever know. But the outer circle you see here in black is the how you say 
the face that is going to touch the, the cross slide. And here, of course, there is too much material missing. So, change of plans, I'm going to use this face as the top side. I'm going to take this part, this 40mm part off, clean this face up. The other side, I'm going to bore and then make a plug with uh, this thing here. This is 40mm, this is exactly what I need to register in the cross light. I just hope I'm not going to push myself in a corner here. Question of work holding. Yes. I made a very little recess here in the middle. This part is lower than the rim. And this is, I think, is gonna disappear when I'm gonna work it in the shape. But first, chuck it in and do this side. I hope I can get my indicator in here. Second try, the other side maybe. That would work. I made here a little 60 degree taper so I can give it tail support because with this big chuck in the machine the thing always tries to chatter. Let's go for it. more feet, bigger depth of cut, let's see what happens. That's better. leaves a better finish too. Okay, let's continue. This diameter is finished, it's to size, no problem. This thickness I have to reduce and I would like in the same time make a round corner here. I installed here a form tool. I think it's about 9 mm diameter but that's not the point. The problem is the carriage is at maximum movement. Cannot go further otherwise I'm gonna touch the jaws here, the carriage. 
So I had to move the top slide completely out and this is barely enough. So we'll see if it works or not. Let's give it a go. I'm ready to start cutting out this little recess to fit the plug. So let's go for it and see what happens. Yep. Ah, a bit too sloppy. I stopped this machine for a moment because it is sticker time! I received stickers from far away Australia from Mark Pressling. Mark, you see your sticker is already on the cheap door and Mark is also sent me this beautiful little card. Mark he can do machining, he can do casting, he can do electronics, he can do whatever, name it, Mark can do. Go and have a look. Now let's continue the machine. About every machinist favorite job parking off. That's nice. It worked. This is the bolt and the ring that's gonna register here. It's a bit too sloppy, but it is what it is. Now this is a press fit. Now of course for me I don't have a press so it's a hammer fit. But just to be sure this ring will not spin around this bolt. I'm gonna drill through and put a rivet in here. Nope. That is better. I'm not strong enough to do that. Jesus. Turn out well. 
here you see a little bit the rivet, the other side completely invisible. To allow me to tie the nuts, I need to cut out here a part, here and here. So I will have a little bit of room for my spanner. This shaper work. I think that turned out not too bad, but looking good. Now let's see if it fits. That feels good. Whoa. Let's nut the thing. Tool holder. Yes. Looks good. And if you're wondering what I'm gonna do with all this free space that I have created now, well, maybe that could work. Now let's put a part in this machine and see if this thing actually works. That should be cool. I think it works great. That was a good idea. Well, I think making this tool post, it was fun to do. And it's sure I'm gonna gain in rigidity, because rigidity is always the big problem on machines. The only problem now I have to fix for rigidity is a forge out chuck sticking out way too much, but that's the topic for another video.